The Pandora Box 10th was released this year with a warm reception. Not only could it play PSP and Naomi games, it could do so on a CGA display. But now, only a few months later, 3A started shipping a newer, updated version. Is it worth your time, or should you walk away? Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. While the 10th took strides in the right direction, there were many areas in which it could improve. When connected to a 15kHz monitor, the blur would ruin the picture, and if you use a modern monitor, the scan lines were unbearable. And then there was this controller bug. We reported some of these issues, and 3O told us that it'd be updated through network push. We assumed this would be okay with our newly bought Pandora Box 10th, as they promised firmware updates. But when the retro shoot released, we found we were sadly mistaken. All of the early adopters of the 10th had firmware that could not be updated, and rather than recall their units, they offered a newer fixed model for a discounted price. As you can imagine, not everyone was happy with the way they handled this. Are all these fixes worth the extra cash? And does this actually support trackball? Let's find out. This here is what arrived. It's pretty much the same as any other Pandora box from 3A. Wrapped in bubble wrap, we have the manual, as well as the Pandora box 10th V2 in JAMA. Here's the manual. Let's go through. But rather than looking at pieces of paper, let's compare the insides. On the right, we have the first release, and on the left is the V2. Both need four screws to open. The case is identical. Looking at the main board, there is a slight color difference and a white sticker showing us the firmware that's been installed. Turning over now, there are subtle differences with the screw holes and the color of the fan. But if we check out the micro SD, the original had a SanDisk Ultra. It's the bottom tier, but it's reliable. But the new version, a generic 64 gig, a huge rank down. So how about the family edition? Same again, the one on the right is original, the left is the new one. And the case is exactly the same. The wired LAN adapter port is still blocked. The ports, everything about them look the same. So let's have a look inside. Again, they look very similar, but if you look at the board, the new one has V14 written on it, whereas the older one, V13. The first edition came with a SanDisk Ultra, which is quite a good card. And the new one, yep, you guessed it, generic. Hooking up to a 15kHz arcade gap, the game's menu seems to be much sharper than the original. It's sad to see that they removed the PSP, Naomi, and Atomus Wave titles from the low resolution list, which brings us to the question, why even bother with the extra power that this has over the previous releases? Well, we're happy to report that the blur has been removed. In fact, games that match the CGA video output, for example things that run on the CPS2 system, look fantastic. But when it comes to the Neo Geo games, it does suffer a little. Without the blur, we can see a sharper image, but as this box doesn't use any scaling tricks like super resolution, the image is slightly off. And this also carries on to Metal 2. Maybe in the next patch they can add blood, maybe up the clock a little. It's pretty slow. And it looks pretty good too. Fire! Hang on, Eagle. It's Tekken 3 with the character select screen. Nice and sharp. Good to see all the characters too. And here's in game without the blur. You win. If we use the HDMI port, we can see the whole games list with Naomi, PSP, and Atomus Wave. If we compare it to the original 10th, there are around 6 games added, which includes Terminator 2, which puts it on par with the Retro Shooter console. Compared to CGA and the previous 10th, the visuals look far better across the board. And we're also given a far nicer scanline filter, so far the best I've seen on a stock Pandora box. And using the high resolution, we can also see that Neo Geo games are looking pretty good.
It's Turtles in Time without the scanline filter. It's nice to see that this game is now fixed, so it won't bug out on the hoverboard stage. We have the full character roster in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. We can finally load and save in Dreamcast games, but all save game files are on the internal memory. If they're on the micro SD, we'll be able to import files to unlock more characters. Another thing that was fixed was that PSP controller bug that was in our initial 10th review. Now we can actually control the character without him licking the floor. To get three or four player games to work, change settings in the settings screen and start a three or four player game. Easy peasy. But we did find the problem when rebinding controls. For player one, it does work fine, but there's no way of setting the same binds for player two, or even changing them separately. So I'm just pushing the same buttons. Let's rebind it. They're completely different. If you could get to a player two menu, it would work okay. But moving away from controller problems, the Mega Drive emulator still has audio delay. And games that you add don't allow you to save your state. Added vertical arcade games do still rotate to fill the screen correctly, but there's no control over it, so some games will rotate left and some right, which is not ideal for a monitor that rotates in only one direction. Now we tried some trackball games. Connecting a USB device will show a mouse cursor on screen, but no input is detected by our games. The only way we can get some action out of these is by using an arcade stick or a control pad. We tried a few different games, and also different versions of MAME and FBA, the results were all the same. Another thing that didn't work very well was when we added games for the PSP emulator. Most games we added were very glitchy, but at least Outrun 2006 works quite well. So how does this differ over the original 10th? Well, the blur removal improves the visuals greatly, and the scan lines are the best we've seen on any Pandora box. We have a few more light gun games, extra characters, and fixes. But the downgrade in microSD quality is a terrible decision. Not having a reliable microSD on a unit that needs it for updates is a disaster waiting to happen. So is it worth upgrading from the original 10th? Not really. But saying that, the Pandora Box 10th V2, even with its current problems, is one of the best Pandora Boxes to own at stock. Just remember to change the microSD. As we finish up, here's a big thank you to all those on the Patreon. Here at Team Pandory, we make video reviews, guides, and help fix them cheap arcade boxes, as well as the A500 Mini. If you'd like to help support our work, please jump on. What a simple like and subscribe would go a long way. Anyway, this has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!